Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 4, Questions 11 to 13. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at the cell cycle. When I saw this unit, I was pretty excited because it reminded me of my days as a researcher a very long time ago when I used to work um, in cancer research. I used a flow cytometer a lot, and we used to assess the cell cycle of a lot of cancer cells we treated with drugs. But um, enough of that. If you are interested in research, I mean, you can contact us directly. I can definitely help. But we're focused on this unit here. So the cell cycle is a series of events that takes place in a cell as it grows and divides. A cell spends most of its time in the interface before undergoing mitosis to complete its division. So I've kind of got a nice summary here of the eukaryotic cell cycle, including the G0, the quinescent resting phase, the interphase stages, so G1, S, and G2, and the mitotic phase, so cell division, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, um, it's important to note, uh, as I introduced, uh, the most common method for assessing the cell cycle is flow cytometry. I mean, it's a real thing. We, we do, um, researchers use this technique all the time. Um, it's important that if we take a look at the stimulus for question 12 and 13, the additional information, we need to read the uh, graph carefully. I might actually just draw it. So if I just draw it here, we've got up. Yep. Yep. So we've got one, two, three. We've got number of cells. And we've got the relative fluorescence. Fluoro. So it's important to note we have to read the x and y axes. So what the axes are telling us here is that with increasing um, relative DNA concentration, we're going to have, or I guess with increasing fluorescence, we're going to have increased relative DNA concentration. And what the y-axis tells us is that the um, uh, amount of cells that have this amount of DNA or the relative amount of DNA, and it's the numbers one, two, three actually do correspond to a phase in the cell cycle. We can go through that when we get to question 12 and 13, but just keep in mind the X and Y axes. Also, it's important to note that most of the, spell, the cells do spend their time in the G0, G1 phase. And obviously, if you, if you think about it intuitively, the phase just before mitosis or the GT, the G2 phase, should have the greatest number of DNA because we want to have the greatest amount of DNA before we divide and um, replicate our cells. So you can probably intuit from here anyway, which one's going to be G0, G1, S, and G2. But we can go through that in the next question. Let's just focus on the first question. It says in terms of the amount of a time dividing, uh, of time a dividing cell spends in each stage, the most variable stage of the cell cycle is likely to be. Now they do give us a nice this wagon wheel of uh, the different phases and they kind of do give you the biggest hint it says g1 phase is the cell maintenance phase i mean it makes sense uh, you've probably in intuited that the answer has to be a because if it's cell maintenance there's going to be a lot of things happening so the answer is a but let's go through why it isn't the others once the cell i mean if you think about it intuitively as well once the cell commits to mitosis it has to go through a very stringent process so let's say D, the M phase. In mitosis, we do not want variability. We want to replicate ourselves, have our daughter cells, exact copies. That's what we want. We don't want to muck around. So D is incorrect because we don't want this variability because it can introduce mutations. Same with C, which is the G2 phase. G2 phase is a preparation, is prepares for mitosis. So again, you don't want any mucking around here because if you muck around, you're going to, destroy the um, process of mitosis. Same with B, DNA replication. We do not want any variability here. We want it to be as stringent as possible so we don't introduce mutations into the system. Now the G1 phase is where the cell is pretty much going to spend most of its life. Well, it's G0, G1. It's one of those phases. It's where it grows. It's going to prepare for DNA synthesis. It might go into quinescent phase and leave the cell cycle. But the point is that's when most things are going to happen. So the G1 phase. So if you think about it intuitively, um, it's kind of like the, the, the prenatal stage where everything's happening. So um, like the start of the Big Bang, if you, if you will. So that's why A is the correct answer. 
So if we take a look at question 12, I might clear this here. Question 12, it's relating now to our figure that we drew here. So keep in mind what the x-axis is telling us, what the y-axis is telling us. Um, it says the height of peak 1 indicates. Before we start anyway, let's just be real. Um, let's just get it out of the way. Remember, the greatest amount of DNA concentration is going to be just before mitosis, so the G2 phase. We know that the, the more right you shift onto the graph, the greater the fluorescence, the greater the um, relative amount of DNA. So therefore, 3 has to be G2 phase. And you know that the S phase obviously precedes the G2 phase and the G1 phase precedes the S phase. So um, you can straight away put those down and we can do some process of elimination. So it says the height of peak 1 indicates A says most of the cells in the sample are in G1. Well, I mean, lucky you, that is the correct answer. So we can circle that um but let's just go through the other ones and knock them off so b says cells spend a very long time in the s phase that is true cells do spend a very long time in the s phase however that's not the, what the question is asking the question is asking what is the height of um, peak one indicate that's not true so that's what s indicates c cell c says <laughs> tongue twister there cells in c g2 have twice as much DNA as those in G1. Well, again, yes, it's a correct statement. G2 do have twice as much DNA as G1, but again, that's not what the question's asking. The question's asking what does peak one say? So that's what peak three states. So that's why C is incorrect. And D is just completely wrong. It says cells in G1 fluoresce more than those in any other phases. No, they don't. Cells in G1 are here and they're the least fluoresced. So that's why A is the correct answer. So now if we move over to the last question, it's kind of related here. So it says, which of the following flow cytometry graphs would most likely be produced by a sample of living cells that is not actively dividing? So recall, the more DNA you have, the more likely the cell is going to divide. So if we take a look here, we want to make sure that our peak or whatever it is, isn't shifted to the right. We want to make sure it's shifted more to the left because there's less DNA. The less DNA we have, the less likely it's going to be dividing. So if we take a look, I guess, at let's say B. So B might stick out because you're like, what the hell is going on? Um, B doesn't have much cells. I mean, there is a bit of some cells. Let's say zero. There's like some cells. But the issue with B is you can see a lot of the cells are up here in this region, which means they're going to be dividing. They're in a G2 phase. So B is going to be incorrect because they're most likely going to be dividing soon. So B is incorrect. If we look at D, D has two twin peaks. So again, more shifted to the right. So again, G2 phase, more likely to undergo cell division. So D is going to be incorrect. So we're left with A and C. So A and C kind of look the same. But if you have a keen eye, you can see that A is actually, or sorry, C is actually shifted more left, which means it has less um, DNA or less uh, relative DNA in uh, C than we do in A. And remember, if we want cells that aren't dividing, we want less DNA. So that's why the answer for 13 has to be C and not A, because it has less DNA. So I think the cell cycle, a lot of it is, yes, prerequisite knowledge, but if you do have a background in research and you've worked with the cell cycle, you could have probably blitzed through this. If you don't have a background in research or the cell cycle or flow cytometry, for that matter, um, it just requires a lot of prerequisite uh, knowledge about interphase, metaphase, uh, sorry, interphase and mitosis, the difference between G, G1, S, G2 phases, and just how to read axes on graphs. So if you still have any more comments about this uh, unit, you can post them in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.